New data indicate that the shot flips inflammatory IgG3 antibodies to non-inflammatory IgG4 type, which may cause immune system to ignore COVID-19 in the vaxxed. Could lack of selective pressure drive COVID-19 to stop mutating? So the second part of that first comment um, seems like the wrong conclusion to me, which may cause immune system to ignore COVID-19 in the vaxxed. Well, I mean, I agree that that's part of the implication of what may happen. If it's telling the, I mean, let's take an example, and it's not a perfect example because it's IgE mediated. But if you take a, let's say pollen, and you react to pollen, and you are induced to not react, maybe that's mediated through IgG4, um, then... The induced to not react is an IgG4 effect. Potentially, okay. yeah. I, what I'm saying is I don't know, okay. maybe okay. nobody knows, okay. the interaction between the IgE system, which is the one that seems to mediate allergy, and the IgG4 system, which seems to tamp down the inflammatory response. Okay. Now, those two things may be identical, and it may match okay. what I said about um, immunologists using the uh, the antigen in question to induce a, um, a standing down of the, the inflammatory effect. But basic point is... Um, if you have the IgG4 anti-inflammatory effect, basically the anti-immunity signal, then that could cause the immune system to stop reacting to COVID, which likely is a very bad thing, right? It's the inverse of what a vaccine is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. There may be instances in which you are better off not fighting, right? So there don't know what the connection is, but we there are certain viruses that we carry once we've been infected that hide in tissues, and reacting to them may be a bad thing. And basically, once they've invaded, let's say, neuro neurological tissue and they've hid there, it may be best to, to leave them alone. The, that may be less damage. Now, in the case of COVID, the mechanism of action, and I, as far as we know, it doesn't seem to hide in uh, in places like immunological tissue. In all likelihood, tamping down the immune response to the pathogen is inherently bad. If we tamp down with these so-called vaccines the immune response to a particular spike motif. Mm -hmm. It may be that a different immunity arises, that the vaccinated will react as naive, that they will then have infections that will precipitate a new immune response to some other motif, you know, to the nucleocapsid, for example. Um, motif is a term of art here, or you're just you're using that? Uh, it's a term of art. Okay. Um, so motif being uh, some recognizable piece of the virus. Right. Uh, now, I will point out something I didn't mention in the in the main discussion of this, which probably we should have discussed, is that there is now a distinction in light of this IgG4 uh, result. There is now apparently a distinction between those of us who haven't been inoculated at all with the mRNA stuff, which mm -hmm. presumably also includes people who got the DNA version, the adenovectored version, and those who got the mRNA version exclusively, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know how that plays out, but the idea that there will be yep. two populations, one of which has, you know, those of us who weren't vaccinated at all against COVID presumably have a much broader response. The natural immunity is not only stronger, but broader. It's to mm -hmm. multiple motifs. And then we will have a population in which... Or it has the capacity to be broader, right? I mean, you don't... You could expose to what for you is a novel pathogen, uh, whatever motif, it's not a term I'd heard before in this context, whatever motif is first recognized by your immune system will be the motif that your immune system uh, mounts a response to first and most strongly. And so your immune system will not necessarily mount a response to all of the things. It's just, it's, it, it, it is more haphazard with regard to, oh, it could be, I don't remember the example you just gave. You know, if it's not the spike protein, it's something Nuclear else. Capsid, Nuclear yeah. capsid, okay. Um, and you know, given that most of the vaccines seem to be spike protein specific, yeah. um, that that gives the potential 
for a person with natural immunity to have developed immunity um, that will remain robust even if the spike protein evolves into something otherwise unrecognizable? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, in a natural infection, there are all kinds of mechanisms to cause a diversity in the uh, immune response. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you have antigen presenting cells that will take various different antigens and show them to the immune system so that there's sort of a built-in tendency not to hone in on uh, a single motif. Um, the question here is, if IgG4 is a signal to stand down, then a virus that displays the um, correct electromagnetic signature to trigger that elevated IgG4 response is sending out a do not it's like a transponder on a friendly vehicle that will keep you from targeting it, right? Mm -hmm, if the tank mm -hmm. is putting out a, a signature that you can recognize, that's one of ours, yeah. don't shoot at it. So if, a vi if first SARS-CoV-2 is broadcasting a signal that our immune system has taken to be a sign not to shoot, that will give SARS-CoV-2 added leeway in people who have that, uh, that IgG4 triggering. Um, it could extend to the other motifs. In other words, if the mm. virus is putting out a signal that tells the immune system to stand down, then does that basically cloak the other motifs from uh, a reaction? Don't know. Mm -hmm. um, there does seem to be the potential here for two different populations. And I would say... Human populations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those of us who did not get the vaccines, many of us have had COVID, um, will have natural immunity from that interaction and will not have elevated IgG4. Yep. Um, and then there will be those. So in other words, you could see a, uh, you could see a lot of things happening. A, the population of people who are now showing elevated levels of IgG4 may allow pathogens to circulate that would otherwise shut themselves down, that would have an R0 below 1, mm -hmm. which would mean that they tend towards extinction, yep. um, but it may circulate, and that may give the opportunity for something to evolve the ability to get to the unvaccinated or the less vaccinated mm -hmm. um, or the DNA vaccinated, who are apparently not having elevated IgG4. Yep. So again, it's a classic welcome to complex systems. You yeah. know, we don't know how this okay. plays out, but the fact that it's like two human populations, those with the elevated IgG4, mm -hmm. that will have two different responses to not only SARS-CoV-2, but whatever other virus can figure out a motif to trigger that shutdown right. uh, message. But the second part of the question, could lack of selective pressure drive COVID-19 to stop mutating, SARS-CoV-2 to stop mutating? There's, there's no lack of selective pressure. There may be a diminishment in some domains you know, in, in, in the motif of the spike protein in those who are most mRNA, mRNA vaccinated? Well, it depends. My guess would be the stand-down signal that is mediated through IgG4 could result in increased viral proliferation in those who have that effect and therefore decreased selective pressure. I could see that. Oh, because there's just more of it, and so those people. But but that hinges on there's a there's an assumption in there, which is that that such people would be more infectious. Um, because just producing more that hasn't doesn't have many mutations or any within the individual doesn't meet doesn't have any evolutionary effect unless it then goes out into the world and and right. Transmits. So you could have a difference uh, in the. Um, the sickness within an individual that doesn't result in it passing on. But my guess is what you've got is, you know, the more virus that's infecting greater numbers of cells effectively constitutes a larger laboratory in which this gain of function experiment yep. uh, exists. So anyway, it, I think it's frightening no matter what category you're in. Yeah. Um, yep. Excuse me. But uh, something else I wanted to say. I did want to say one other thing. Mm -hmm about this question of inflammatory and anti-inflammatory responses. Oh, yeah. Can I actually read? So I had this question um, for you, and we didn't get to it in the top of the hour. Uh, let me just read from the abstract. Sure. Right? Uh, this is, again, if you want to show my screen, you can, Zach. This is the paper we talked about in the main episode today. 
uh, live stream 155 uh, by Ergang et al. Class switch towards non-inflammatory spike-specific IgG4 antibodies after repeated SARS-CoV-2 mRNA vaccination. It's the title of the paper. Second sentence of the abstract reads, shortly after the initial two mRNA vaccine doses, the IgG response mainly consists of the pro-inflammatory subclasses IgG1 and IgG3. Here we report that several months after the second vaccination, SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies were increasingly composed of non-inflammatory IgG4, which were further boosted by a third mRNA vaccination and or SARS-CoV-2 variant breakthrough infections. So my question reading that was why does it, why is inflammatory, IgG1 and IgG3 being inflammatory, pro-inflammatory versus IgG4, which is now um, taking a, lar a much larger chunk than it had previously of your total IgG complement after all these mRNA vaccinations, which is non-inflammatory, why does that matter? Yeah. What's the relevance? So it is often confusing. There's certain things like inflammation, which we as patients of medicine mm -hmm consider negative, right? Inflammation is bad. Well, inflammation is bad in a sense, but inflammation is also adaptive, right? right? So what we're looking at is a system in which inflammation is a mechanism of action for a response to, in this case, a pathogen, mm -hmm. right? So for example, you might get, if you have an infected tissue, that tissue might swell, right? And it will swell and produce pus. Well, what is pus? Pus is white blood cells, right? And so when you've got pus in an infected something, what you've got are white blood cells and antibodies that have gummed up the something. Maybe it's a bacterium. And, you know, is it good to have pus? Well, pus is the product of an active immune response. And so, anyway, there are various... Um, cascades that involve mm -hmm. inflammation to actually recruit immune cells into a location where they need to do their action. And so medicine often treats things like inflammation, and the answer is sometimes that's likely to be counterproductive. Right. Just like, I mean, treating all sorts of symptoms. So, you know, oh, I'm uncomfortable, doctor. Well, let me see what I can do to make you comfortable. Mm -hmm. How about we get rid of the reason I'm uncomfortable as opposed to getting rid of the discomfort? Treating fevers is the same thing. Very often, not always, but very often. Exactly. And so, you know, people will also be familiar. Antihistamines are considered good because they shut down an allergic response. But the point is the allergic response is the inappropriate action of the immune system. And the histamine response is part of a correct immune response. Uh, response to an infection, mm -hmm. right? So there's a histamine cascade yep. and antihistamine works, assuming that what you've got is an allergic response that you do want to shut down, you know, an out of place allergic response rather than a correctly placed immunological response to a pathogen. Yeah. So anyway, it, it's that inflammation is part of a proper response. It certainly goes wrong, but medicine often over interprets it because it's present where there is pathology, mm -hmm. but often as a response to it. IgG follow-up. I thought the study showed a tamped-down response to spike itself. How does that translate to reduced generalized immunity? It doesn't, except that my understanding at least is that if the variable region of this antibody, this IgG4 antibody, uh, finds its target, that it tamps down immunity. And so that means that anything that can display that flag has the ability to set to send that trigger message. Mm. Um, so the question is, are other respiratory viruses, for example, going to end up evolutionarily exploring space around that trigger because the closer they get to it, the uh, you know, the greater their effectiveness. So mm. anyway, it's not general immunity that it will be tamped down, but the question is it may be much broader than SARS-CoV-2 because we're not talking about a motif so complex that other viruses won't evolve it. 